Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to present here. Uh, and good afternoon to everyone, including the board members of Phil Export and our participants. My presentation is on the Strategic Investment Priority Plan or the SITP. What is the SITP? Basically, uh, the SITP, similar to the Investment Priorities Plan, it's a plan prepared by the BOI in co consultation with the FIRB, the other investment promotion agencies or authorities, given that this will all, uh, the SIPP will also govern their operations now. And uh, other government agencies, agencies uh, administering tax incentives and the private sector. Um, this should be approved by the president and should contain the following, um, the priority projects or activities, the scope and coverage or of location and industry tiers, recommendations for non-fiscal support, and other information that are pertinent to the SIPP. So that's what is provided in the IRR of the CREATE Act. Uh, what is the approval process? So basically, the most important thing to note here is that it should be agreed upon by all the investment uh, promotion agencies. So it should be accepted by all the IPAs because they will have to abide by the SIPP. And then um, under the implementing rules and regulations, there is a steering committee that is created to oversee or to review the SIPP. So we call this the SIPP Steering Committee. So after uh, there we reach an agreement with between all the or amongst all the IPAs, then we will be conducting uh, public hearings. And then depending on the results of the public hearings, then this will be presented to the SIPP Steering Committee composed of the FIRB, the representative from the Office of the President, and uh, other important or concerned government agencies. So once uh, cleared by the steering committee, SIPP steering committee, then the board, BOI board, will uh, approve this. Once approved by the BOI board, then this will be submitted to the Office of the President for approval. So that's the basically a um, summary of the process. So uh, what is the, this is the details the, uh, of the, these are the details of what should be in the SIPP as provided in the law itself and the implementing rules and regulations. So as what was mentioned earlier, it's a list of the activities. Uh, that should be, that are deemed qualified for grant of incentives. The scope and coverage of location, because the, the CREATE Act, there is uh, the, the, your entitlement to incentives will depend on your location. And then you have the industry tier. Again, entitlement to incentives will depend on industry tier. So there is a determination of the location and the industry tier. And then what are the terms and conditions for the grant of enhanced deduction? So the enhanced deduction is not automatic for qualified projects. There should be, the, uh, the law requires terms and conditions for the, for the grant of the enhanced deductions. And then qualifications for, ex, for expansion or entirely new projects or activities. So how do we define what are expansion projects as opposed to what are entirely new projects? So that has to be tackled in the SIPP. And then criteria and conditions for existing registered projects or activities prior to the active effectivity of CREATE Act to be able to register and avail of incentives under the CREATE. So if you are registered under PESA, SUBIT, Clark, or BOI, how do you uh, register under the CREATE Act? And then conditions and qualifications for export enterprises. So in letter E, there is no qualification whether you are domestic or export-oriented for as long as you are 
registered with another IPA prior to the effectivity of the Act. So letter F is specific only to export enterprises registered prior to the effectivity of CREATE because they will, uh, this is for the availment of the special corporate income tax after the expiration of the transitory period. So if they will reapply. And then uh, letter G, specific qualification requirements or conditions for a particular sector or industry and other limitations as set and determined by the BOI in coordination with the FIRP. So similar to the current ITP, there are certain qualifications and requirements to be able to register with BOI. So in the SIPP, there will also there will also be qualifications and requirements or conditions for registering with any of the IPAs. And then export of at least 70% of products and services. So if your activity will export 70%, then you are, uh, that, that will be considered in the SIPP. And as mentioned earlier, uh, the SIPP should identify the non-fiscal support to create high-skilled jobs to a local pool of enterprises. And then uh, there should also be a provision on the treatment of start of period of availment. Uh, the period of availment of the incentive shall commence from the start of commercial operation unless otherwise provided in the SIPP. Because under the CREATE law, uh, there is a lim um, it says uh, three years, parang maximum three years for you to start your operations once you registered with any of the IPAs. But uh, noting that certain activities may have long gestation period going beyond three years, then this is recognized by the law and, it, uh, and the law says that this should be included in the SIPP. So uh, as of now, we are ident identifying uh, activities that may have long gestation periods so that they can go beyond the three-year um, limit for starting your commercial operation. So for example, uh, yun mga industrial tree plantations because you can only harvest your tree, trees after seven years or more than seven years, depending, depending on the species of the trees that you planted. So, yan po yung sample niya and why we have this. Uh, there is a specific requirement now under the CREATE law that you cannot include an activity in the SIPP without um, undergoing an evaluation process. So that in no on we even uh, for for the IPP we do have the evaluation process, but uh, this time sa create act there are specific there are ten conditions or criteria uh, that we need to assess before we can include an activity in the SIPP. So now, uh, strict dito, it should be supported by a formal evaluation process or report. So what are these uh, criteria or parameters or conditions? So we have 10 and uh, as provided under Section 308 of CREATE. So number one is substantial amount of investments. Number two, considerable generation of employment especially towards less developed areas. Number three is considerable amount of net exports. Number four, use of modern, advanced, or new technology. Number five, processes and innovations that will lead towards the attainment of the sustainable development goals. And then number six, uh, addressing missing links and other gaps in the supply or value chain or if uh, the activity will move, uh, will help you move up the value chain or product ladder. And then number seven is promotion of market competitiveness. 
Number eight, enhancement of the capabilities of Filipino enterprises and professionals to produce and offer increasingly sophisticated products and services. Nine is contribution to Philippine food security and increased incomes in the agriculture and fishery sector. Tenth is services and activities that can promote regional and global operations in the country. So what are the approaches that we are currently undergoing to implement the 10 conditions to have that formal evaluation process as required by law? So for the substantial amount of investments, uh, as discussed with the, the, all the IPAs, and this was accepted already by all the IPAs, the agreed uh, approach is the capital intensity ratio. Uh, for the considerable generation of employment, the agreed approach is labor intensity ratio, considerable amount of net export. So uh, take note, this is net export, so it's not just export per se, but it means uh, export minus import. So we get the net export. So what we... Well, what the agreed approach is to consider the net export, the raw net export, but this should be uh, supplemented by the revealed comparative advantage and analysis of the product space. So we will consider three factors when it comes to net export. And then use of modern advanced or new technology um, because this cannot be quantified so we will be conducting experts group discussion here. We have um, discussed uh, already the procurement of the services of the Development Academy of the Philippines. And uh, we are just now finalizing the, the procurement of the services of DAP for DAP to help us conduct the experts group discussion. So, so for all the criteria or parameters uh, pro, uh, provided by the law that cannot be quantified, uh, we will engage the services of the DAP for the conduct of experts group discussion. So for the processes and innovations that will lead towards the attainment of sustainable development goals, so we noted that there are 17 SDGs. So... For all the 17 SDGs, again, we identified all those that can be quantified. So for all those that can be quantified, we identified what are the approaches that can be used. But for those that cannot be quantified, again, expert groups discussions. So it's a long process. For the missing link, addressing the missing link or moving up the value chain, uh, we have the experts group discussion here. But this will be supplemented by our existing roadmaps. So we do have existing roadmaps and our existing roadmaps, they contain uh, supply chain analysis. So the supply chain analysis, we have re requested our uh, sectoral champions to update this so that we can use this in uh, evaluating or assessing the, the SIPP parameter uh, addressing missing links and supply or moving up the value chain. So, so we can identify which activities can help us move up the value chain or which activities can help address the supply chain gaps. And then promotion of market competitiveness. So here uh, we can use the product space, the herfindahl hirschman Index, and experts group discussion. So for promotion of market competitiveness, we deem it more necessary to have both the qualitative and quantitative approach uh, because it's quite difficult to measure competitiveness. Although we do have the product space and the herfindahl hirschman but we do have some weaknesses. So we need the experts group discussion. And then the enhancement of the capabilities of Filipino enterprises and professionals to produce, to produce and offer um, 
sophisticated products and services. Again, experts group discussion because how do you identify how you can enhance the capabilities of Filipino? What activities can enhance our, uh, our, our capability to produce more sophisticated products? And how do you measure sophistication of products and services? That's why we need experts here. And then contribution to Philippine food security and increased incomes in the agriculture and fisheries sector. Uh, the approach, agreed uh, approach here is the analysis of the local production and importation of agricultural products and um, Wait, uh, analysis of the local production and importation of agricultural products because uh, this is the data available from the Philippine Statistics Authority. And then they also have the uh, supply, uh, the demand, the demand uh, statistics. So we can use this uh, to determine which crops, livestock, or uh, agricultural products have negative supply. And uh, of course, uh, we also need experts group discussion here because agri, uh, agricultural, the agricultural industry or sector is quite sensitive industry. So aside from the uh, statistical analysis, we want to have the experts opinion also. And then services and activities that can promote regional uh, operations. Uh, so this one is also for experts group discussion because how do we measure or how do we determine what activities can promote our regional uh, participation or regional operations. So that's the approach that we have identified as agreed with the other investment promotion authorities. Um, so what are the industry tiers? As mentioned earlier, your incentives or uh, qualified projects, incentives, entitlement to incentives will depend on where uh, its activity will be classified. So after identifying the priority activities for inclusion in the SIPP, the next step would be to categorize them. Uh, into particular industry tiers as defined by the law. So the law uh, uh, set three categories. So tier one uh, covers high potential for job creation and then uh, sectors with market failures resulting in under provision of basic goods and services or activities that will uh, create value through innovation, upgrading, and moving up the value chain. And then activities uh, that are considered as essential support to sectors critical to industrial development. And then activities emerging owing to, pot to potential comparative advantage. And then for tier two, these are the activities that produce supplies, parts and components and intermediate services that are not locally produced but are critical to industrial development or activities that will produce import substitutes. For Tier 3, Tier 3 is basically uh, industries um, engaged in innovation R&D because we, the, the intention is to promote uh, more competitive industries through innovation. So this will include activities engaged in R&D, uh, those that activities that will generate new knowledge. Uh, yun, ano neto is the intellectual property registration. So uh, ang ano niya is uh, uh, registration with the intellectual property office. So you will need to have this. And then uh, commercialization of patents, industrial designs, copyrights, and utility models. Because we do have a lot of patents large with the IPO field, but the problem is that these are not being commercialized. So in the 
in recognition of that, uh, the commercialization of our patents with uh, large with the IPOFIL will enjoy the maximum incentives available under the CREATE Act by being under tier three. And then highly technical manufacturing and then uh, activities critical to structural transformation of the economy. For, for a certain uh, um, criteria or qualification under each tier that cannot be quantified or are hard to define, these are also covered in the services that will be uh, conducted uh, or rendered to us by the DAP, the uh, Development Academy of the Philippines. This will also be covered by the expert group discussions. So, because it's difficult to say what are uh, critical to structural transformation of the economy. So, these disqualifications uh, or criterion uh, will be uh, covered also by expert group discussions. For the incentives availment, uh, uh, entitlement, or and period of availment, as mentioned earlier, it will depend on your location and your industry tier. So the further you are from the national capital region, the more incentives that you will be entitled to. And the more, uh, the more you incorporate innovation in your activities, the, the more incentives you will be entitled to. So there is a difference on the incentives that will be uh, granted to domestic market activities versus export market activities. So for export market activities, um, you uh, activities here will be granted for a minimum of four years if within the NCR to maximum of seven years ITH if you are locating in uh, areas beyond NCR and beyond those uh, within the boundaries or beside the boundaries of NCR. So if you are locating in Mindanao, Visayas, you can get seven years of ITH. Uh, the, the main difference here is that export market activities will be entitled to 10 years enhanced deduction or a special corporate income tax of 5%. So it's a choice. It's, the, it's an option of the company whether it will avail of the enhanced deduction or the SC. So the company will have to weigh which one will be uh, more advantageous to its operation. For the domestic market, uh, domestic-oriented activities, there is no SEAT. And the entitlement to enhanced deduction is only five years as compared to the export, 10 years of enhanced deduction. So that's the main difference. Income tax holiday is also from four years to seven years, depending on location and uh, industry category. But, the, the, but there is no SEAT and only five years for enhanced deduction. So that's it. Uh, so these are the menu of incentives. So income tax holiday, corporate income tax, special corporate income tax of 5%, enhanced deduction due to exemptions, uh, VAT exemptions and uh, VAT zero rating, and then enhanced deductions uh, as listed for here. Uh, we can, the, the secretariat will provide you with a copy of the presentation. So, Meron enhanced deduction on the buildings and machineries, on labor, on R&D, on training expense, on domestic input expense, on power expense, and on reinvestment allowance. So, that what will happen to the mandatory laws in the implementing rules and regulations? Um, 
It says there that the SIP bill shall include sectors or industries that are mandated by special laws to be listed in the investment priorities plan and or granted incentives. So ang sample po ng mandatory laws, uh, for example, the Mining Act uh, and then the Energy Efficiency Act, the Renewable Energy Act, and so on. And tourism act po, mandatory law po yan. So marami po tayong mga mandatory laws. We call, we, we, we call them mandatory laws because their, their inclusion in the IPP is mandated by law. So they will always be, uh, they, they will still be included in the SIPP. Uh, validity, the SIPP will be valid for three years from each, from its issue once or upon approval of the president uh, as provided by Section 300 of CREATE and Rule 4, Section 5 of the IRR. The SIPP can be amended. So uh, amendments that can be made, uh, 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 for example, is the inclusion of additional areas or activities. Uh, changing or revision of the terms of declaration of an investment area, then uh, temporarily suspending projects or activities. For example, if we deem a certain activity is already, uh, there are already enough investments there, then we can, we can suspend that. Or there may, there may be other considerations that, uh, that will warrant the suspension of the activity. The, the amendment to the SIPP is subject to publication requirements. And if we are going to add additional uh, activities, then it should, that activity that we want to add should also undergo the formal evaluation process or the criteria for investment priority determination. And then, uh, the amendment should also consider developments in this industry and justifiable positions of the private sector and other related government agencies. So in other words, there should be uh, consultation. And then uh, provided that any amendment or suspension of the SIPP shall not prejudice the availment of fiscal incentives already granted to registered business enterprises. So whatever we amend, basta naka-register na kayo, hindi na kayo maapektuhan ng amendment na gagawin sa SIPP. So ang maapektuhan lang, um, on, only those projects that will uh, register or apply for registration after the amendment of the SIPP will be affected by the amendment. So those uh, projects that were already registered prior to the amendment, they will not be affected. Publications, so uh, the SIPP to be effective requires publication in at least one newspaper of general circulation or in the official cassette. Even the amendments as previously uh, mentioned, it should be published. Okay, uh, so what are the updates? Given that we have not issued yet the SITP as we are still uh, conducting the required evaluation, formal evaluation processes for each criteria in Section 300. So we requested that the current 2020 IPP be considered as the transitional SITP. And the FIRB in its meeting of April 14, 2021 agreed or approved the adoption of the 2020 IPP as the transitional SIPP. So, but with the condition or the proviso that uh, projects that will uh, register under the transitional SIPP will be considered under tier one category without However, this is without prejudice to being upgraded once uh, the final SIPP has been issued. But the upgrading uh, is not automatic 
the activity will still be uh, assessed if it is qualified to be upgraded. Depending on the uh, qualifications or the, remember we said that the SIPP should contain the terms and conditions or qualifications for registration and then for the enhanced deduction and so on. So if the project meets all those uh, qualifications, then it can be upgraded. The tiering can be upgraded. Uh, what so? What are the activities in the transitional uh, SIPP or the uh, 2020 IPP? Um, we have uh, 12. Uh, we have 12 uh, priority activities. So these are the uh, activities or services. Uh, for the fight against COVID-19. So this covers yung production ng mga PPEs, production of vaccines, drugs and medicines. For the services, ito yung mga testing facilities, hospitals, and even crematoriums. Because with the volume of cadavers, um, we, we, we have difficulty in accommodating yung uh, uh, proper uh, treatment ng ating mga cadavers na. And then investment in activities, uh, supportive of programs to generate em employment opportunities outside of congested urban areas. So because we want to decongest Metro Manila, we want to, to encourage more investments in the provinces. Then uh, we have manufacturing activities and agro-processing. The number four is agriculture, fishery, and forestry. Uh, five is strategic services. Six is healthcare and disaster risk reduction management services. Uh, then we have mass housing. It is infrastructure and logistics, uh, including the projects under uh, PPPs. Uh, the public partnership projects. Then innovation drivers, then inclusive business models, then environmental or climate change related projects, and then energy projects. For the special laws, ito yung sinasabi rin natin na mandatory laws. Uh, but of course, we have the export activities. So, of course, we have the export activities. So, we have the uh, manufacture of export products, then services exports, and then activities in support of exporters. Then, for the special laws or the mandatory laws, um, we have industrial tree plantation, mining, uh, publication and printing of books, then oil deregulation law, uh, the rehabilitation, self-development, and self-reliance of persons with disability, uh, RE law, tourism, and energy efficiency. So these are all the priority activities under the transitional SIPP. So that, that ends my presentation. Thank you, Paul.